<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Be- uh, Hey everybody, welcome to Between the Rolls Murder Hobo Tuesday night talk show. Uh I I'm not prepared for anything. I'm just pretending. I'm 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 trying to make it no fake it till you make it. I'm not fake it till you it make there. it. Yeah, yeah. It's not happening tonight, folks. Uh uh, but no, uh this is the show where we go, we talk about something that's happened in the past three games or something like that. We might speculate on future games very rarely. And tonight we have our first of the year Iron DM and this is the first period. I would say annual, but that'd be a lie because we didn't do anything like this last year. Um, But we'll get more into that later. First, let's go around the uh, group and uh, introduce ourselves starting with David. I'm trying to ignore your backdrop. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I'm, uh, I, I said no Republican crap. Everybody. It is. <laughs> BTR is going to be I, taking a whole new re- <laughs> meaning now. <laughs> Fox News is going to hit us with a lawsuit. They own the rights to Hitler. BTR between the Reich. What? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, and for that remark, we're is it between the third the and the fourth Reich, or which Reich? Is oh it? man, god damn it, Kyle! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm David. Uh, I play on our Thursday night show, Cacophony, and mm. our mm. alternating Saturday night show, uh, the Cataclysm campaign. We haven't really come up with a formal name of it yet. Calamity. Well, I keep calling it. We're gonna we're gonna call it the Cataclysm, Frank. So, but uh, yes, I play Zadar, and then I play Ingve on their shows, and the other times I can most likely be found here on Between the Rolls. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's a wholesome show. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Does it get it more is. wholesome? You Shirley can't Temple. get more ha- wholesome than Shirley Temple. <laughs> you can't get more handsome than her Shirley Temple. I agree ah, there too. Wholesome. So sorry, sorry. Handsy. I was looking Temple? at myself and on the screen, I was just like handsome. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Chris Chris Hansen calls David on a regular basis. <laughs> I have no idea who that is, but <laughs> uh, he does to catch a predator, or he used oh. to do to catch a predator on NBC. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> You with that, man, I swear. (laughs) That's the cop in Frank. (laughs) That's right. Love catching predators, man. Yeah, he does. (laughs) What he does afterwards, I won't tell. That's right. (laughs) I'm not wearing a body cam, so nobody knows what the hell happens to that. Swedish torture films. There you go. (laughs) Oh, man. It's crazy. Well, that's uh, David. Let's uh, yeah. introduce uh, uh, Frank. Is is that your name, Frank? That's, First that, time is, on the show? that is my uh, actual name. Actually, I've been on this show once or twice before. If, oh, uh, okay. You're, I don't recognize you. I yeah, apologize. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the, the hair. hair. It's the hair. It's uh, all... Parted uh, on the wrong side. It's dirty and greasy from uh, hauling 14 inches of fucking snow around. Folks, if this is your first time here, I'm Frank. Uh, Normally sit in the DM seat a lot. Uh, Every once in a while, I get to be a player and die. Uh, I love Between the Rolls. But uh, tonight, I especially love Between the Rolls because it offers our illustrious panel, uh, San Scott, who is in Texas and probably living by candlelight and killing goats. Uh, It allows us to go ahead and spread our DM wings in Iron DM. A little background. Normally, uh, we do this on the fly, on the spot, so you can see it, but that's usually an entire show. So tonight, uh, everybody got me the roles that they had, and I did my own roles. And uh, we have a random selection of items that each one of us have that we must go ahead and turn into a scenario. And you'll be seeing that a little later. Kyle, back to you. Hey, I'm Kyle. I'm going to be hosting tonight on Between the Rolls. And uh, 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 right now I'm the DM for Cthulhu Comes, Everyone Dies, which is the alternating new campaign, also known as the Consolation Campaign on Thursday nights. (laughs) 
Oh my gosh, I love that eyeball. It's a great eyeball for that. Uh, why do you, why uh, do you have Mitt play? Romney on your screen? <laughs> Mitt Romney. <laughs> That's everybody's favorite druid, Frank. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I lost track of where I was. You were at Cthulhu. I was at Cthulhu, yeah, yes. At Cthulhu. Uh, Cthulhu comes, everyone dies. Uh, surprisingly, there hasn't been much Cthulhu. <laughs> or dying. Uh-uh, not yet. Uh, Although... Close. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really should have just... A lot of ones. away with it. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of ones rolled that night. <laughs> that was a there were a lot of odd fish in that one. Yes. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. Gosh, fine. Anyway, we are Murder Hobo. You can find us on Twitter. You can hit us up on our Discord channel if you want to talk about D&D with us and uh, maybe pick our brains about what we're about to talk about tonight. We have stuff on our show that you can, you know, buy. It's uh, listed somewhere around here in the tiny yard uh you can follow us on twitch you can check out our archive on twitch if you're subscribed to us or check it out at youtube uh most importantly if you want to play in one of our one shots like you saw uh previously on saturday you can hit us up on twitter on gmail uh and finally uh special thanks to the sponsors i'm gonna go first with our best favorite most important Odd Fish Games and their Adventure Sense, as well as their Shine Project, uh, uh, they're they're wonderful. And if you have to come up with something on the fly and you need to work out some details, check out that Shine Project. Helps you write a nice story. Uh, and then to our other, even better, more important, more active on the show than even Odd Fish Games, and that's after snorting uh, putrid sewers. Uh, <laughs> I would like to introduce the wonderful uh, 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 Pirate Dog Dice for when you're rolling like shit. Pirate Dog Dice. They'll make you some dog shit dice. <laughs> um, gosh, and I mean, with that, oh yeah, that's the one that kills everyone, just about. It is. Didn't, didn't uh, uh, Carol's character lose a leg to that die? She did indeed. She also got stabbed in the shoulder on a double crit 20. So, nice. Pirate Dog Dice. <laughs> Do they have a Twitter yet or no? Yeah, it's at Pirate Dog Dice. Oh, okay. At Pirate yeah, Dog Dice. Fine. Okay. Yep. But uh -huh. it's, it's not going to be open. It's commission only. Uh -huh. so. Ooh, uh -huh. Ooh. And I'm commissioning next for some dog shit dice. <laughs> I Radio. have a dog. I don't like it. I'm going to give it some hot sauce and gorilla glue, and oh. <laughs> that'll mix them together, pop right out, I hope, and yet be solid enough to uh, shape into some dice. Put a Tide Pod in there, and you'll be all set. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, oh. Speaking of turds uh let's talk about our first uh show thursday night the tower of the curd curd yeah it's curd uh, <laughs> don't mix that up <laughs> episode david ow. you're in cacophony yeah ow right i am in, in cacophony you're in cacophony why don't you tell us what happened okay well officially uh daphne zadar and camille are currently bivouacked inside the Tower of the Curd. Uh, basically, what has happened is we had to make our climb up to the tower. And one of our, one of our compatriots is four-legged four -legged equine. So, yeah, that wasn't tough at all. <laughs> yeah. was it wasn't for her. No, no. <laughs> her roles were great. It's poor Daphne that's fallen down the mountain, you know? So... I like but to I, hit Daphne in the face. <laughs> but eventually our intrepid party finds its way to the tower. Uh, running up to the tower, we had some encounters and some avoided encounters with wildlife. Uh, anything from bats to, I don't even know what that was in, in the water. And you're not going to tell us because we might have to face it coming out. That's right. Yep. God damn it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so after that, we make our way into the entrance to the uh, Tower of the Curd. We get inside. Uh, we explore a little bit before uh, we are 
presented with the choice of pulling a lever or not pulling a lever. And guess what? One you pulled the lever. Us, you pulled the lever. We pulled the damn lever. Yeah. Oh. Lever broke, too. <laughs> I don't know. You guys are old. It became a new groove. Yeah. Yeah. Pull the lever, lever. crap. <laughs> no, it, it was the, the lever. It was Bugs Bunny when he was knighting that guy. Sir <laughs> Loin of Beef. <laughs> Bam! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, of course, you know, that summons uh, lifted a portcullis or something and, yeah, confronted right away with the undead. <laughs> Thank God we had a paladin and a newly acquired base. <laughs> so, after clearing the area, we find we discover a room. Uh, we check it out. Sadar <laughs> does a little light cleaning. And uh, yeah, we uh, sealed ourselves up in for a night's rest. We were getting low because it was a lot of undead we were dealing with. And we were running low on spells. So anyway, uh, yeah. So that was the episode with uh, Temple of the Curve. So uh, I want to have to eventually get myself caught up on watching cacophony there it's a good uh, show it is <laughs> a good show uh last saturday we had our one shot uh the garden of discontent i have no idea i surprisingly <laughs> did not watch that one either uh oh, so man, you missed out that was fun but was there a skill challenge oh yes there yeah. was Okay. Whether we wanted it or whether we knew it or not, the whole thing was a skill challenge. And a gazebo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nearly ate them. Yes. Dread gazebo, as Carol called it. So I think that's a thing, isn't it? A yeah. dread gazebo? Yeah. You did not fight that because that thing has a shit ton of hit points. It might as well be a dragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well I mean, a well built gazebo can stand the test of anything. Yeah, that's true. Well, three of them were inside it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the Carol, garden of Carol's content. like, what happened, in. guys? Okay. <clears throat> do you want to tell him, Frank, or do you want me? It's all you, baby. <laughs> All right. Garden of our discontent. All right. We had a total of four players that night myself, Carol, Rob, and our guest from our Sunday night show, Middle Frank, otherwise known as Robert of Zeppelin. Anyway, so he was on the show, and yeah, it was a pretty funny show. Uh, Rob was on point with uh, his ranger muscle pants. <clears throat> Carol was Carol with Berta. <laughs> Berta is a, a, one of her newer characters, I believe, uh, a Goliath uh, barbarian. Barbarian. Yeah, who tried to jump into a little boat. So uh, anyway, we were tasked with, we were given the task to acquire a package. Um, uh, that was located in a garden and it turns out it was an enchanted garden so right away we're confronted with choices crossing a bridge or, or jumping into a boat so we send the goliath to go jump in the boat <laughs> anyway and that the show just went downhill from there folks um uh yes we ran into troll uh troll uh yeah that that put a hurt on us right away. Uh, my character was Gidry. He was a uh, druid um, circle of spores. Uh, kind of built him after Swamp Thing. I didn't think it was too feasible, but yeah, yeah, it worked. But anyway, the mo main reason why I brought him <laughs> up because my girlfriend watched the episode and thought it was hilarious was the thing with the good berries and Frank... Yeah, <laughs> Gidry produced dingleberries is what Frank called them so, for healing. So it's funny, juvenile tongue-in-cheek humor like that, folks. But anyway, story progressed. Uh, there are a lot of hazards in this enchanted garden. There's uh, fields of sentient flowers. <laughs> uh, there's a druid raccoon running around. Uh, was he a druid or a ranger, Frank? Ranger, huh? He was a rogue. Rogue. Uh, rogue slash ranger, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I, think, yeah. I think he was a ranger. Uh, mm -hmm. He has since been changed in the to-be-published version. Okay. 
Uh, we were confronted <laughs> with a dread gazebo, which was pretty awesome and could have killed us all, but somehow we escaped. So, uh, yeah, uh, angry pack of gnomes, uh, you know, uh, messed Daddy. up Kenku. Hey, how's it going, Arlo? <laughs> And say hi. 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 <laughs> we heard him. Up a cut. So anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much how, how our evening went. Uh, you know, only one of us got near death. <laughs> middle uh, Frank again. Yes, middle Frank again. He said, damn it. He's just like, my son kills me <laughs> on the Sunday show and I'm going to get killed. <clears throat> uh, uh, point of note, anybody with uh, uh, eight and any of your skill abilities and all that? Yeah, it's eventually going to catch up with you. <laughs> so it caught up with me. Charisma check. My character built on Swamp Thing had no charisma, so <laughs> I got charmed. <laughs> Turned on the party, and that was yeah. That and that's pretty much how it ended. We missed our objective, and package was inside a glass alligator. That glass gator. That glass gator that swam away. <laughs> so and that's how we ended, folks. It was a good episode. It was. It was wonderful having Frank. Uh, Rob, always a pleasure to play with. Carol was was great too. I mean, she she had a pretty solid character. So I'm pretty sure David was the only one that sucked. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that game's going to be offered as part of HoosierCon Online in March. Yep. So some changes have been made to it, but there were. I think uh, finished total 16 different encounters and they got to about four or five. So it was a standard for a two hour. Yeah, it was a pretty big adventure. I mean, if it wasn't for all our lollygagging and stuff like that, I mean, we probably would have covered more ground, but there was a lot of ground. You have what, 16 encounters planned for that thing? So, yeah. A lot lot of room for expansion on that. But yeah, they, uh, the Enchanted Garden was a theme I've been kicking around for a while. Yeah, so a lot of lot of saves, a lot of checks. So, you know, like I said, my character just kind of seemed really ineffective. I mean, a druid that <clears throat> fights, you know, it's just... Yeah. I, I, I think Rob shooting the Kenku Orator created more trouble than needed to be. Right. I thought right. Carol was going to go ape shit when he did that. Yeah, yeah, she she almost did. I could see the vein in her head starting to move. Yeah, it was just pulsing away. She's just like, I'm going to get another character killed. Why didn't you ask? You could talk to this person. Nope. Now, the, gar- the garden gnomes, I thought, were a clever idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. Uh, hey, that was my time to shine. There you go. Right. So, but I did something right. And besides almost killing Robert, <laughs> I mean, uh, I can't remember. It's what? Balder, I guess. I think it tur- turban. It was something. Yeah, something. Baldric uh, the turd, or something. That's right. Like yeah, Baldric the turd, and he played a wild magic sorcerer. That so. was a lot of fun. So <laughs> I played one on 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 cacophony, and it's a it's a roll off with the DM, and you know when you lose something yeah. happens yeah he didn't lose he came out on top on both of his uh wild magic so he yeah got lucky yeah they were, i think the first one was pretty innocuous or something like that so but everything else <laughs> oh man so so that was it that was uh the episode a really fun episode i hope frank plays this uh again at a uh, at a con <laughs> I think you, you do plan on offering it right i believe so yeah it'll be at hoosier con next month it's like the 19th okay uh, it's a good February? adventure that's pretty quick ain't it march march, march. oh okay. we're in february <laughs> march, yeah march 19th sure it's a, right now. yeah it's it's a friday saturday i believe is the campaign yeah so. yeah if you're watching this sign up for hoosier con play with murder hobo because Frank always gives out the good stuff. He does. He does. I, yep. I had the pleasure of playing a con game with, with Frank. And yeah, it, 
it was a lot of fun. You get a lot of swag. So I As- recommend Asimov's it. missive was Gen Con, but yeah, um, no. Uh, so look for Hoosier Con. It's out there on. Uh, Ugh, man, I am really tired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> war, war We've been dealing with about three feet of snow in some areas, sometimes four. Yeah. So we the, got uh, off Indiana easy where I live. But... Tuckered out. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> but yeah, uh, Warnet, war, war, Warhorn.net. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can sign up there. <clears throat> It'll be a fun time. Are you going to have the little squirrels? Uh, for your players and stuff the like that. I, the I, I, I still have a ton of them. Oh uh, man, I love those things. Those were awesome. Yeah, with uh, with no in person conventions last year, uh, all of my swag is backed up. So yeah, time to uh, get ready for the new model, folks. <laughs> so, uh, time to crap out the old model. So who knows yeah. what uh, you'll get if you sign up for uh, the Garden of whatever the fuck that was called garden uh, of the discontent yeah, Gar- garden, garden of, of discontent is what it's going to be called uh yeah. and and the overview given by david was accurate for that game however some of the things have changed and some of the things will continue to uh metastasize <laughs> <laughs> that is right <laughs> oh man. It, it will be a good time i added two npcs which will yeah. <laughs> yeah his npc turned out to be a bit of a dick <laughs> so <laughs> weird how that happened yeah yeah that was the garden of discontent yep. yep all right uh following that was the tri-generational frank campaign with extra frank on the side uh what do you call that looting leer Le- yeah, lo- looting Lear. Uh, these guys have been in Light Reach, a halfling uh, seaside coastal. Was town. this a Lightfoot halfling? Yes. Uh, uh, I love the alliteration. Yes. Well, you know, I, I, that's how I do shit. Uh, looting <laughs> Lear. You know, stuff looting like Lear. That. Uh, these guys Someone's been lo- watching that poet from the inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, she. She's great in her own way. I did not care for her. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, yeah, anyway. Uh, hate mail. Uh, yeah, hate <laughs> mail addressed to Adam Hobo Inc. That's fine. I don't care. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. If you don't like mine, <laughs> shove it. Uh, maybe I don't like yours. Uh, anyway, uh, Ludi Lear. These guys have been in Light Reach, Lightfoot Halfling, Coastal Town. Uh, They've been getting their asses robbed pretty much every time. Uh, previously, they found three rockets on their ship, the Pistorus, and sent them into town, blowing up a vintner, the brothel, and another business. Uh, they escaped uh, by the skin of their teeth. Uh, however, one of them, Copious V. Bitters the third, master brewer and a magnificent merchant, discovered uh, some helpful items uh, to recover a vast tribute given monthly to Lear, the sea god. Uh, the treasure trove was gathered up in a wagon and simply pitched into the ocean. Uh, so these guys said, Fuck that. We're going to go after it. Uh, (laughs) First off, uh, there were a lot of sexual innuendos that were not intended originally. So uh, if you don't like that stuff, don't watch the episode. But it started off with, I'll say, a whale trying to hump their ship. Uh, and it just continually got worse. Uh, they ended up into go going into the blue eye of Belize, essentially, where the tribute of Lear was located. Uh, found a few different things that really didn't like them, uh, before finding something that really didn't like them called an aboleth. Uh, it wasn't the full blown one, it was more of a minor one, uh, but it kicked the shit out of uh, <laughs> AJ, aka Felix the Rogue, and several others, including a uh, red vested halfling. Uh, much to my surprise, the party was able to vanquish said creature we ran long so kyle there you go we ran about two and a half hours long uh but uh they vanquished the creature 
uh, survived and now uh, have to figure out whether they want to go out the same way they came in or if they would prefer to go through a cavern opening uh, leading to God knows where with God knows who doing God knows what. Uh, <laughs> we will find out their selection this Sunday as they uh, seek to get a long rest so that they can raise one level to sixth. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, there were a lot of sexual innuendos, which just kept coming out of the woodwork. There was just... I, there were vivid descriptions of the surroundings. So if you don't like that, don't watch it, skip it. Uh, if you don't care uh, about weird stuff, uh, watch it. It is funny. There you go. That's the producer that you guys can't hear. But, so uh, so what is that guy's name? <laughs> Chris Hansen. Yeah. There you Chris, go. Chris Hansen might be looking for me, but I doubt it. Uh, because the two <laughs> youngest members uh, were quoting Moby Dick, uh, while the older members, including myself, pretended to be 12-year-old boys and just made a mockery of the game. But it was fun. Uh, it's always fun. Uh uh, with the Ocena clan. Those guys are hilarious. I highly recommend it. Uh, there's nothing like watching three levels of a family interact and uh, just have a good time, which oh, is yeah. what the tri generational campaign is. Kyle, that is uh, Ludi Clear. Back to you, my friend, and you're muted. That is the past three shows, which you could have taken apart in one of them had you just gone to at Murder Hobo at Twitter or MurderHoboInc at gmail.com maybe even talk to us on the Discord page. Uh, unfortunately this week there's none of that as it's all campaign with Cthulhu, Calamity and more Franks. I don't know. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Find out. First one is on Thursday. I won't talk about the other ones because they're not worth talking. No, I'm kidding. Oh, come uh, on. <laughs> oh. No, uh, but uh, tonight we are going to... Uh, uh, did, whoa, whoa, did you want to do a preview of Thursday? Did I want to do... I don't yeah. know what's happening on Thursday. It's yours. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening on Thursday. There you go, folks. <laughs> he gives nothing away. So. Absolutely. No, Stone Face GM. I, it's all in the mind here. You'll just have to watch and find out after uh, <laughs> that horrible fight. <laughs> Pick an adjective. Is huh? stone face? No, clueless. <laughs> Same difference, honestly. Got it, all, got it all written out. I'm not winging it at all. Um. <laughs> oh, you know about this Thursday then. Kobolds. Yeah, kobolds, kobolds are here. Kobolds are here. <laughs> out on the as, sea. Uh, the Monopoly man uh, carrying. Uh... <laughs> Pringles can. <laughs> you run into the NPC, Mr. Pringle. <laughs> They're led by uh, Kleenex uh, Wizard of uh, run Runny Nose is where he's from. <laughs> I mean, that's the perfect segue because that's about what we're about to do next. <laughs> uh, tonight is our first Iron uh, uh, DM, GM, or whatever you want to call it, where... Uh, the three of us are presented with random tables and we wow. come up with an adventure to figure it out. Now, everything has been pre-rolled because we, well, we thought Carol was also going to be here and she likes to talk long. So we thought, let's roll everything ahead of time to really oh get God, things going. I've got to get email already. <laughs> It's already 10 pages long. Don't worry. I was worry about to about say, it. man, we, we, we coasted through this. So. <laughs> Scott, Scott's oh, the one It's not over. an episode of Between yeah. the Rolls if we don't insult at least three people. Yeah, that's and true. And Carol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but oh, this man. started off with, uh, uh, um, gosh, episode something of Between the Rolls where we did a random table adventure and we i think we came up with uh his idea his idea folks and we actually played it too um two of them actually uh, yeah yeah uh yeah. frank carroll scott myself, 
gotten. I think I was in one, right? I think. Or no, no, Scott's was an iron. Scott's team. was incredible because yeah. he we had the Dyson logos map. Uh, Dyson at Dyson oh, logos. Yeah. That's right. Curious. That's right. Uh, uh, so we thought we would continue with that. Um, we're doing random tables, like I said. We already rolled everything out, um, <laughs> including. Uh, well, I don't know. How Let do me pull this, this up here real quick. <laughs> uh, what I did Why was don't I... you, uh, yeah, Frank, talk about the tables that you made real quick, and then uh, we'll go from there. So uh, several years ago, I came up with uh, random tables so that when I hit the wall, uh, was in a fog, didn't have any ideas, uh, suffered from fatigue, I could always just randomly roll a set of circumstances and that would give me the basis of the scenario essentially i told these guys and scott who scott we hope you get your power back on soon uh give me these roles according to my table there are a specific set of events each one is defined by a die roll <clears throat> these guys got me their die rolls i read it <laughs> off the chart uh their results are as follows uh, they have been tasked early uh, because, again, we were only using a half hour of the show uh, to go ahead and come up with a scenario. So rather than spur of the moment, these guys have had, in Kyle's case, what, an hour and a half? You got it at seven? About that. <laughs> I had about an hour when I signed up to, into the green room and was like, oh, hey, <laughs> there's an email from Frank. Uh, David and I had a little bit longer to go ahead and create ours, but essentially, uh, I have a sheet really. that uh, just it, it's just a set of random uh, options, uh, not nearly as complete as Kyle's. Uh, but these guys oh have gosh. given me their roles. Uh, I have told them what the roles uh, dictated, and now we will go ahead and tell you what our roles uh, resulted in. And then we will tell you what our general scenario is. Sure. Uh, let's go around real quick. And uh, well, I tell you what, uh, since we did a random roll for this, why don't we randomly decide who gets to go first? Uh, David, one, two, Frank, three, four, and myself is five, six. Uh, believe me, if it lands on five or six, I'm going to lie and say it's one of these guys. <laughs> of course he is. Four. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> That's a five. Liar. We're gonna start having dice cams. <laughs> uh, 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 no, yeah, I will happily go first because uh, I've um, if you're, gotten if better. You're ready, go ahead. If not, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, so uh, rolled seven different die. Uh, what I've got was a first level adventure uh, uh, taking place in a very cold area in a forest. It'll involve church ruins uh, that have been uh, infested by monsters with a, 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 an interesting NPC who I will get in later there and a magic item that the party will find along the way. Uh, and so what I've come up with is that uh, there has been a terrible blizzard uh, uh, this past weekend uh, as for inspiration. Uh, the party has been tasked with um, uh, discovering what happened to the Church of the Twilight Lady, which is a group of rangers, clerics, and paladins who, who follow the Twilight Lady, and their job is to be lamplighters in the furtive forest, uh, which is incredibly easy to get lost in if it weren't for these lanterns that these uh, uh, clerics light along the way uh however since the blizzard there have been no lights in the forest uh, uh people have been getting lost and have completely disappeared um and so the party is tasked with uh heading straight to the uh church and finding out what happens as well as lighting the uh lanterns on their way there um and so the party begins out trekking in snow, uh, lots of constitution saving throws to not freeze to death, as well as survival rolls to try and find the lanterns. And I think 
that would probably end up being a bit of a skill challenge. Um, because if they fail, they're not going to light enough lanterns and there are merchants who are still going to get lost. Um, if they succeed, then they manage to save quite a few more lives. Uh, even if they themselves die when they reach what was once the church, the temple of the twilight lady, uh, which is very similar to uh, a, a wizard's tower in that this building goes standing up way higher than the uh, redwood style giant trees uh, uh, and fungus that happens to be in the forest. Um, however, when they arrive there, they find that the tower has fallen over on its side and has been completely damaged um, with uh, no survivors until they begin exploring what essentially was a tower that is now on its side. And so that'll be like the little interesting hook there to get you going through there. Um, when they start looking through for survivors, they will find uh, a former paladin of the lady um, who is now an oath breaker and he'll have an interesting story where he got tempted by the darkness and he is part of the reason that the tower has fallen um, in which case the tower is going to be infested by quite a few undead things zombies and skeletons something that the party will be able to take over of former uh, uh, clerics uh, and somewhere in the ruins they are going to find um, the moon sickle dagger which is a plus one dagger made of silver taken from the light of the moon itself um, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking it's probably going to be uh, 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 do extra damage to lycanthropes because this oathbreaker paladin is going to be a little bit of a shapeshifter and he is the final boss in this level and since an oathbreaker paladin fighting a bunch of first level pcs is going to be ridiculous we'll give him instead of a great sword with smiting capabilities uh uh two claws that do 1d4 damage plus something each and that'll help the party survive that a little bit easier lowering that and again we'll have undead uh and i think that's actually a good one if you wanted to start a campaign on it or potentially end it there because <clears throat> you're in a horrible forest where something happened to a bastion of light so uh you can take care to leave it where you want any questions for me what are your uh, sub encounters? Mm -hmm. The sub encounters, uh, like I said, are going to be uh, probably a crawling mm -hmm. claw because you're going to find a hand that's sticking out of the rubble. And when you go to uncover it, it's just the hand. And that's when the surprise attack is. Nice. Um, and I think we're going to have a little bit of a social encounter where the Oathbreaker Paladin might not. Um, choose to attack the party at all, uh, provided they um, parlay with him relatively well. But let's be fair, if it's a bunch of murder hobos, um, someone's going to die. That works. Yeah, no, I thought so. Yeah. What level are you making your Oathbreaker? What level? Because um, he's the big bad guy, right? He is going to be your big bad guy. Uh He'll start off low, and if you decide to make the campaign about this, I think he's going to be a reoccurring, reoccurring villain. That works. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I saw this, and my first thought was, uh, uh, let's do Wendigos. Uh, let's pull Cthulhu into this. And, <laughs> but my mind is uh, in an entirely different headspace right now, <laughs> and I didn't want to come up with uh, the same old thing, you know? Uh, after yeah. writing over 500 of them yeah yeah you know what you you will get the. Oh, you know what this is just like that when i wrote two and a half years ago yeah fuck it 
<laughs> <laughs> I'm too far into it now. <laughs> oh no, I uh, was like, I was talking to you about the last time you ran the uh, uh, the random roll table uh, last year in November or October, mm-hmm. and we started playing that, and I was just like. Frank, is this the random roll encounter? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I, I'm just winging it because <laughs> Sir Sir Kleenex of Nose is, uh, you know, just uh, come from Beer Town. And then you find the Cola Sisters. Uh, they're a bunch of half. Yeah, the, There's the Pepsi t- and Coke. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi, Cola, and Sprite. <laughs> Nice. All right. At this point, we've got even or odds. Uh, David, you want to call it? Odd. It's another five. David. Odd fish games. games. There oh, we fish go. Games. Woo! Woo! Okay, so that's me, right? Yeah, that is you. What do you okay. got? What'd you roll up first? Okay. Uh, yeah, my rolls, I mean, were, I don't know, kind of like right in the middle. <laughs> um I had, Kyle got a 100. Yeah, he got a 100. Got a 100. <laughs> well, I felt bad because I got uh, a 5, you know, off of the D100. And that's really not bad for what we rolled it for because I think I can make this work. Uh, what I have, though, as far as my level, I rolled a 7. So I have a 7th level. Uh, adventure or are we going adventures or a campaign uh, i was just saying mine could be turned into a campaign fairly easy yeah um, so one shot in this case and if it's something that you can tie into a campaign that's great i was just mentioning mine could turn into a campaign yeah. as well well i mean the idea i have could potentially turn into a campaign or probably more like cacophony you know a serial more than anything, you know, would be really, really good for this, for what I've got in mind. So, mm-hmm. okay. So this is what I got. And uh, it, they're not bad. I mean, th- this is actually really doable. Uh, okay. I've got a seventh level uh, adventure or campaign, uh, a hot area. So um, mountains, I've got city ruins, an NPC bard, and the magic item is the Amulet of Life Protection. So, with that in mind, I'm totally going to rip off Steven Spielberg. <laughs> uh, sure. Save your private we- Ryan? No. <laughs> yeah! yeah! <laughs> Ernest! So, uh, who's Just. Ernest? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no. There, there was... Uh, there was a TV show in the in the early 80s that Steven Spielberg produced, and it was called Tales of the Golden Monkey. Oh, that's right. And this when I saw this, this is what, what I thought of. Hot area, mountainous. I'm thinking Chult for the setting. Um, one of the things that I would like to do is create a custom background. Uh, for for this uh, archaeologist or ar- or archaeology, so I think it was in D and D at one time. I'm I'm not quite sure, but I don't know. I've heard it mentioned, or could be mentioning that other game that Carol talks about all the time. But <laughs> there's an archaeologist background specific that, to the Tomb of Annihilation. It, it, it's in Tomb of Annihilation. It's in Tomb okay. of Annihilation. Okay, perfect, perfect. So I, I've only played Tomb of Annihilation in uh, uh, con setting, and uh, it was like the oh, over. Lord. Yeah, it was the over. Uh, what they did at the con is uh, they have like a at the Saturday thing they have like all different level tables set up, but you play one campaign and everybody's got different missions and stuff like that. And we were doing Tomb of Annihilation that year. So anyway, this is great. I love the setting. Um, all right. Uh, with that, with Tales of the Golden Monkey, I am thinking about an NPC. The NPC bar is a bard. Uh, 
you know, probably a, a lore bard would be it with a background in archaeology who has been commissioned by nobles to, you know, uh, ex ex uh, excavate and explore ruins in Chalt uh, to try to find uh, this artifact that is the amulet of life protection. Um, with that, with that scenario, you could have also run you know different adventures off of that as far as like the exploration i'm thinking the serial thing in mind would probably work best you know because like with cacophony i mean we have cliffhangers you know every every episode and something like this would definitely work um uh the excavations of course villains you know have a villain you gotta have a belloc in there you know rip off indiana jones too you know <laughs> a high priest you know kalima so but i'm thinking yonti temples uh the wildlife the wildlife in chult is is awesome i mean they, they've got everything from you know i mean demonic monkeys to you know the yonti Undead dinosaurs. All, all monkeys are demonic undead dinosaurs and undead giant apes so yeah i mean it is king kong folks you know skull island so uh as you can see i'm the pop culture fanatic with this show <laughs> but anyway but that's the thing you can take inspiration from these things and put it into a game and as a writer, you could write something really good. Yeah, I mean, it might seem kind of derivative, but I mean, you know, it's formulaic, but it works. You know, you could have a lot of fun with it. So, but that's what I would pretty much run it as a serial, uh, you know, kind of Tales of the Golden Monkey style. I would have a bar set up and that's where the patrons, uh, <laughs> the party meets. I mean, come on, it's D&D. &D. Everything starts in a tavern usually. So... And sometimes that's the only place they're at. Right. This bard is telling tales, you know, of his exploits, you know, uh, you know, exploring the, uh, the, the ruins of the mountain cities of Chult. Uh, have it to where it's like a rainforest type uh, situation with an exploration into the mountains uh, up into from the, from the forest floor up to, to the mountains. So, well, real quick, um, let's narrow this down. It, you sure. suggested a serialized I'm, thing, I'm and I like that. Brush. <laughs> uh, uh, let's let's make it a fine brush now. This yeah. is a one shot. Yeah, I'm, you got to guide me through this. One shot. There we go. Um, <laughs> we're starting off in this tavern where we're meeting this lore bard. I assume mm -hmm. he's going to hire you to go find something. What are you finding? Mm -hmm. Uh. Perhaps. What ruin are you going after this time? That's the thing. He would probably have a map of different ruins, and you, as you would have your choice, is what uh, ruins to one explore. shot. One you get shot. To pick the ruin. Right. So. That's what I'm. Yeah. So who's uh, the ruin this time? Okay, the ruin is probably going to be towards the top of the mountain. That would be the okay. one because that's what I rolled. I rolled sure. for a mountain. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking st something like, you know, the peaks of like Machu Picchu or something like that, okay. uh, as far as the city of ruins, okay. uh, perhaps the, the amulet of life protection is there. Protection. Okay. And, um, what kind of encounters are on the way? Okay. Along the way, you gotta, you gotta work your way from the forest floor up to the side of the mountain so <clears throat> there's there's wildlife to encounter uh the thing about this area and it, since i would be running it like uh tomb of annihilation there's dinosaurs man gotta have dinosaurs so but as you go further you know above the canopy and then higher um you'll run into uh more i i want to say uh humanoid type things as you approach the ruin again the yon t okay yeah and i would probably have it that the big bad would be a yon t priest or priestess so uh you know creating um uh, god what do they call it there, there there's different types of yon t but uh it would be something like that it would be an abomination i think is one of them a yon t that's the hard one yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, seventh level well, because of that. Um, it's uh, seventh level is getting up there as far as what these DMs here like. To right, do. that's why I was but thinking of abomination because that's that's a pretty tough one. So, you know, uh, perhaps the the amulet of life protection is being used in their ritual because Yanti are not born; they are created. So <laughs> through through a blood ritual, and that that would make sense to have an amulet with that power, you know, as the, you know, the amulet of, of life protection being that, that thing it's being, you know, uh, corrupted and used for these blood ceremonies with the yon tea. So, okay. So I, I think that could work. The, the overarching goal is to get the amulet. So some, you know, Pretty simple. Go in, sure. you know, fight your way to the top, and then fight your way back down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or, or you know, I mean, come on, it's just like it's D and D. You can use your imagination. So, yeah, you might have an artificer. <laughs> you know, I'm talking a glider. Glide down the mountain. <clears throat> oh, ooh. nice. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. You end up. Oh. Oh, Maybe yeah. well, put in like a CR creature well above it. Yeah. Well, they're running out of a temple while this giant snake former oh, yeah. god is after them. And it's like, there's a glider right there, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Fly right Skill on out. Skill check. Skill check. Well, there's, <laughs> the, the thing is. Ernie will the, roll a natural one and fall to his death. There are pterodactyls, folks. There, There's the terror, terror folk, you know, and yeah. that could be an encounter towards the top. You know, Aarakocras suck. No, not Aarakocras. I'm talking terrafolk. You know, like pterodactyls. Yeah, so like in that. in Tomb of Annihilation, there are half human, half pterodactyl. So, so Aarakocra. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what their alignment is. I I I I, I think it's I think it's neutral. I think it's pretty Even neutral. Oh. Steve. Oh, Steve. That thing is cuter than my child. I did think of another name if you didn't and come up with Steve. It's already P train, so you know. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Yeah, he goes to the back back door and barks. So I'm thinking Valcor as a name for it. You know, the Lech Dragon from Never Ending yeah, Story. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking um, about Pissam. <laughs> Piss <laughs> nice. a good one. Uh but yeah, that's what I have it. Come on. I mean you can't get <laughs> <laughs> you can't get more pop culture than that with uh you know an aerial escape you know at the yeah, end. right but that would be fun because you'd have to roll for it you know so yeah i would be interested in playing that one yeah uh any questions for him frank uh no i think he, he's got the minors he's got the majors and he's got the uh goals so i'm happy mm-hmm. with that oh All yeah right. and yeah, d- there's no, there's a plethora of creatures and stuff like that to pull from. So you're going to have a big random table for them. Across oh yeah, themselves. exactly. Exactly. So, but yeah, uh, I got to write this up now. <laughs> that is the idea of the show. We're going to put something out there and write it out. Oh. And then you'll DM it. Uh, and you'll DM it. Okay. We'll see because I'm writing it. So it might be easier to do it that way. Um, I have just picked up uh, this this software. Um, it's something that Don turned me on to. It's uh, World Anvil, where you, you can do world building in it. Yep. And I just started playing with it. And it's, I mean, it's great. I was watching YouTube videos on it by the creators of it. And I mean, it is great. Uh, the character creation a lot more involved than than D and D Beyond, but I mean the sky's the limit with the character creation. So something like this World Anvil would I would definitely use to create this adventure. So it's like the Wikipedia for RPG. Oh yeah. So I mean it, I I can't wait to get in and start using it. So yeah, there I go. I got my homework assignment, folks. <laughs> I use scrap paper <laughs> <laughs> because Beer Town. Sure, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Yeah, <laughs> the your adventure is in Beer Town, you know. So, 
but but yeah no i i like this idea yeah so i i think it's it's got something so that's what this show's designed to do spark us Mm -hmm. oh yeah it would be great if i could uh cats out of the bag now but i mean if i could have kept the ending you know quiet <laughs> change yeah, you it. can change it yeah exactly yeah. Uh, uh or i could have an alternate <laughs> you know ending for that also yeah, absolutely so. where the party just dies or rocks fall snake. everybody dies yeah. giant yeah. boulder everybody run <laughs> <laughs> while All another right. giant boulder goes up <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> So. All right, Frank, you're the one who came up with the tables. You rolled them up. What have you come up with? We've bought you as much time as we can. I know you're kind of a new DM at this, and it's very hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire on all we'll, we'll take here. it easy on you, Rook. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. It, it, it'll be hard to correlate all my information. I got uh, second level, hot area, desert, open air wilderness, a strange event, an NPC warlock, and a magic item is a ring of elemental control. Uh, I came up with the party is crossing a desert of beer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they notice uh, a celestial event, a ring of clouds, a la uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, with lightning over in the area when they go over to that region to investigate because they are professional adventurers and they need to know. Uh, they'll come across dust diggers, which are essentially inverted octopi that uh, rest silently in the sands. Uh, they'll have to deal with that. Once they get to a small ridge line to overlook to see what this problem is, uh, they'll deal with that vipers, poisonous snakes, uh, slithering their way, uh, because why does it always have to be snakes? Because everybody hates snakes. Uh, but instead of Nazis, and instead of uh, the uh, Ark of the Covenant, uh, they look down and they see one warlock-looking dude uh, with four dust methods clearing off an area that has a few ruins. Uh, it's not a ruined city or anything, but you got to have some reason that it can be marked. So maybe a overturned obelisk, maybe an old lion statue, something like that. But the warlock uh, themselves is controlling the four dust methods, which aren't very difficult. Uh, however, as we all know, the cool thing about a method is when you kill it, it's going to do some damage to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the warlock itself, uh, its patron is uh, Akadi, goddess of air elementals. And she has commanded her faithful servant to go to this region of the desert and find the ancient ring of elemental control so that uh, it can be protected and her dominion over the area can be maintained. Uh, so the warlock is going to be maybe fourth, maybe fifth level, uh, at least tall enough, or at least high enough to go ahead and conjure minor elemental. Uh, at second level, these guys are not going to be taking on an air elemental. Uh, I consider using an aerial target in lieu of uh, dust methods, uh, but I figured. With the four dust methods scouring, maybe they uncover something with the ring and a few more uh, dust methods appear. Um, maybe create a new method, a uh, sand method, something of that, uh, with an abrasive personality. Don Rickles is a sand method, maybe. Uh, but it's, uh, as we all know, with Murder Hobo Inc., you got two hours to do this. You're looking at anywhere from four to six uh, encounters, depending on how they do that. Uh, traversing the sand, a mirage maybe, uh, the inverted dust diggers, poisonous serpents, the vipers. Uh, take a look at the ruins on the edge of the search pattern. Uh, then finally, the warlock who must maintain uh, concentration on the dust methods and then once the dust methods are destroyed, the warlock themselves. Uh, 
this would lead in if you wanted to use it in a campaign as well you pissed off the goddess of the air elementals so your big bad is going to be a freaking goddess uh so that would be where you would take the campaign it's going to be strictly going after the minions of the air goddess uh maybe i don't know uh a blue dragon uh as the highlighted end or you know big bad uh or cloud dragon uh go something along that method but Second level, real easy, straightforward, not a whole lot of suspense there. Um, and that's what I came up with. I didn't even give it a name though, but it would have to do, it would have to be something of the four pillars or something like that because the dusk methods are trying to clear this little uh, cup in the desert to try and find this ring. Maybe it's attached to, I don't know, an undead. Uh, sub lich maybe an animated skeleton but a, a badass animated skeleton mm -hmm. uh but the warlock should be enough to go ahead and uh hand the party their ass so that's what i came up with that's your specialty <laughs> yep. any questions um let's see so the four pillars the four pillars of <laughs> beer town <laughs> it's the four beer ten pillars the beer ten pillars from the uh, kleenex uh sand sands of the kleenex and what did you say was controlling the memphis uh the warlock the warlock whose, whose patron is uh i can't even read my writing el Qadi, goddess of air mm. okay because that's right. why he's there, or she. Uh, mm -hmm. He or she has been sent there. They have been sent there to go ahead and do this. Uh, they've been given the opportunity to create minor elemental, uh, to scour uh, the desert floor to find this. And their, uh, their goal is to recover the ring so it cannot be used against the goddess. Gotcha. Yeah. I like it. I like it. You're muted. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure what you were saying you know, was <laughs> combing the desert. Yeah. Have you found anything? We ain't we found, found with the hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought uh, I love that movie. We don't we don't use warlocks a lot uh, simply because I I suck at magic. I mean, I really do. I I have a hard time using spellcasters, but. Uh, I should use them more so that I get better at them. Uh, and I thought, well, and it was a fucking random roll. So I knew <laughs> I was screwed as soon as I saw Warlock. Yeah. But I thought, well, what if the patron is part of this? So that that's that that was my line of thought. Yeah. Ooh. I would honestly personally uh go with the uh the genie warlock patron. Because yeah, it ties right work. into the air right there, and then you have the methods serving them. Yeah, no, it's good. That... Write that down. <laughs> Write it down. Read the five e books, Frank. You would have known <laughs> that yourself. Is that in the five e books, or is that in the unearthed arcane? I thought it was unearthed arcane. No, it's in Tasha's now. Okay, it's the Tasha. noble genie patron. Because because we discussed that one, didn't we? Or had one of them? Didn't somebody had... play one? I uh, me, I I had oh, okay. uh yeah I had Eden she she what she had a we didn't even, I didn't even get to use her patron or abilities we we're a level one I mean that that was that was rough <laughs> hey and in my defense I shoveled a shitload of snow here you're lucky I came up with a conducive argument at all yeah. so did I oh, yeah. I shoveled the daycare lady snow because she didn't shovel her walk as I carried my child in. Gee, you saw him, he's Kyle. A, he's a big little boy. <laughs> well, all right, but guys, attach a shovel to his gut, and he can just push his way forward. Oh no, he doesn't like snow, but he, he will not it. touch it. Will not walk. Okay, uh, but that's enough about my family and my traumas that they put me through. Gosh, I thought I was supposed to put the, the trauma joys in of parenting. There you go. <laughs> But guys, that is the first Iron DM, and uh, uh, who, who here uh, won the Iron DM? 
we don't know. No, <laughs> those adventures are going to have to be written, and uh, then we'll vote on it. Uh, but until then, it's done. Uh, <laughs> his is done. <laughs> he wrote that one thing down, and his is done. <laughs> done. I'm Stephen King, baby. <laughs> done. Done. Man. All right, but that's it for Murder Hobo uh, between the rolls tonight. Uh, catch us Thursday at eight o'clock Eastern time for Cthulhu Comes, Everybody Dies, uh, followed by Saturday's show, also eight o'clock. Oh gosh, I love that Cthulhu. I I get lost in it, staring in it. Uh, uh, the Calamity Campaign. Um, Till then, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. If you want to check out our YouTube archives, you can also check out our Twitch archives. If you subscribe, uh, if you want to shoot the shit about some D&D stuff, go ahead to our Discord channel, as well as buy some really awesome D&D stuff. I would also be wearing my shirt right now, but I spilled more tiki masala on it. <laughs> it's still the You're most You're going to have to order them another one. Right? <laughs> Next time I'm getting you two shirts. <laughs> but next time I'm getting us the Dungeon Master shirt. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to be lime green so everybody can see us coming. Yeah. Uh, if you want to play, you know, maybe you're that forever DM or maybe you're just getting started into D&D, you can uh, go ahead and contact us at MurderHobo at Twitter or at gmail.com. Uh, unfortunately, you're not playing in the next three games coming up. Sorry. But watch them to get an idea of how terrible we are to our players uh <laughs> if you want some awesome dice on commission go ahead and talk to pirate dog dice they're at twitter uh for when you roll like shit pirate dog dice uh also thanks to Oddfish games uh <laughs> and their adventure sense uh do not put any of them up your nose that is a bad idea. Not recommended. <laughs> not recommended unless you want to smell sewers for seven years um that was everything hilarious. smells like sewers everything tastes like sewers you don't that moment was priceless priceless <laughs> priceless John or you can go to the shine project purchase that it's for writing a book but honestly it helps with the campaign too and they're going to come up with one just for a campaign uh don't forget about our podcast you saw our faces if you never want to look at them again Go download our podcast. It's also one of the links around us. On Podbean, on, folks. Somewhere. On yeah. Podbean. Uh, after that, uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Uh, oh, I didn't ask for final thoughts, but no one wants to hear those. Nobody anything. cares. <laughs> Nobody gives a Carol's not Final on thoughts. The show. It was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed